Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Ersina Engine, 3D Python game engine, and this is tutorial number 17, creating sparks. So when making games, we often need to add in spark effects uh, in scenarios such as shootings or collisions to make the game more fun. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to add or create sparks in Ersina Engine, and I hope you like it. So first, let's import the Ersina module. So from Yersna, import star. And then let's set up our basic app. So app is equal to Yersna. And then app.run. So in between this, I'm going to first create a button. So I'm going to create a button entity. B is equal to oops. B is equal to button. I'm going to set the text equal to nothing. And I'm going to have a color value color dot rgb i'm going to set the rgb to 255 255 255 0 and set the scale to 2. so initially the text is going to be an empty string right here since we don't really need any text we'll set the scale to 2 so that the button will cover the whole window the color parameter has four values here um the first three represents the rgb which is white in this case, and the fourth parameter just represents the transparency. And so zero here means that it's totally transparent. So if I save and run this, I have my years no window right here, and I have my button, which is the whole screen. So now let's create a sparks entity class so we can actually use it to create sparks. I'm going to have a class of sparks entity. I'm going to define an init function self x y. And so the x and y are just the coordinate of the sparks. I'm going to call super dot init. I'm going to set self dot parent equal to camera dot ui. And here we just set the parent entity as the camera UI. Uh, set self.model equal to a circle. Self.color equal to color.white. I'm going to set the scale to 0 0.012 as the initial spark size. I'm going to set the x as x and the y as y. Then self.dx, or the change in x, is going to be a random value. So random.randint, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 2, this should be negative. So it's a random integer from negative 2 to 2, and I'll divide this by 1,000. And this is going to be the speed of each spark in the x direction. I'm going to have a random change in y, which is a random randint from negative 2 to 2. I'll also divide this by 1000, and this just represents the speed in the y direction. Self so that ds, so random dot randint, 1 to 3. And instead, I'm going to divide this by 5000, and this is going to be the speed at which the scale of the spark changes. So now let's also add in an update function to just move the sparks. So define update of self self dot x plus equal to self dot change in x self dot y plus equal to self dot change in y and self dot scale minus equal to self dot change in scale. And so the sparks will move in a random direction and at the same time become smaller and smaller. Now we'll also do some boundary checking, so when the spark is small enough, it'll just disappear. And we can also do this in the update function. So if self.scale is less than or equal to 0 0.005, I will destroy uh, self. So it will just destroy the object. And now we're going to create a function that will just be used to create spark objects. So let's create that function down here. Define create sparks. I'll set the number equal to nine, 
which is going to be the number of sparks. Uh, I'm going to have a list of none multiplied by num. So nine um, empty uh, objects in the list. And so far, I in range num. So I'm iterating uh, nine times. E of i is equal to sparks. So I'm creating a new object of mouse.x, mouse.y. And remember, these are the coordinates of the x and y positions of the mouse when I click. So each time the function is called, nine spark objects will be created. And the position of the sparks is basically just where the mouse is. So now let's call the function by clicking the button. It's down here. B dot on click. So this is a. Um, so whenever the button is clicked, uh, I'm going to call a function, and the function that I'm going to call is the sparks function. So I have this button. Whenever I click the button, this function is going to be called. So if I save and run this, let's see. This should be camera dot. UI. So if I click, I have just sparks right here. So I'll click a few times. Notice that I have, um, there's just some sparks coming out. They get smaller and they get further away. From where I click, I'm just going to keep clicking. And each time, um, you see that every single spark is different. This is because they'll move in a random direction um, every single time. And, uh, and they will finally disappear at the end. So this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.